Idiot by Dostoevsky. Dramatized for radio in four episodes by Melissa Murray. With Paul Rees as Prince Mishkin, Alex Jennings as Ganya, Roger Allam as Rogozhin, Leah Williams as Nastasia, David Swift as General Yapanshin, Paula Jacobs as Mrs. Yapanshin, and Stephen Moore as General Evolgin. Episode 2. You came! You actually came to my birthday party, Prince. How charming! How surprising. Now, who do you want to meet? We have important people, obscure people, men and women, young and old. I, I came here to see you, Miss Darcia, to talk with you, if, if that's not impertinent. Over there is our guest of honour, Mr Totsky. Mr Totsky rescued me as a child when I was only eight. You've heard the story? My parents died very suddenly, but luckily, luckily, an old friend of my father's, Mr Totsky, heard that I was orphaned. Being a kind, disinterested gentleman, he rushed to my side to protect me. He has been protecting me ever since. Debaucher! And here comes General Yapanchin to prevent a social scene. I'm very surprised to see you here, Prince. He arrived at our house only this morning, you know. A long-lost cousin of my wife's. She found him very engaging. How is your wife, General Yapanchin? Mm, my wife? Very well. Do you see, Prince, the pearl necklace I'm wearing? How much do you think it is worth? Oh, I, I'm afraid I have very little knowledge of jewellery. Oh, it was given me this very morning. Guess who gave it to me? Oh, this is quite unnecessary. I will have no secrets from the prince, none. Well, it is worth 5,000 rubles. Oh. That's what the jeweller offered me. He's coming to collect it in the morning. You're selling it? The prince wishes to meet my benefactor, Mr. Totsky. Excuse us, General. They think so mainly, so cheaply of me. A pearl necklace. They have set up their neat little arrangements. You know that the general plans to marry off one of his daughters to that devil Totsky. But first, they must see me settled. They must silence me. And do you know what they plan for me? Of course you do. That, that is one of the things I want to talk to you about. They plan to marry me off to Ganya Ivolgin. They'll pay him a fortune to take these tainted goods off their hands. And he would do anything for money. Oh, you see him standing over there? <laughs> He's vainer than a woman. Of course, once I am married, General Yapanchin hopes that my husband would be a compliant man. The general intends me to be his mistress. <laughs> Have you ever heard anything so amusing? I cannot believe that to be true. That would be infamous. Yes, it would be. <laughs> but it will not stop them. <laughs> and here he is, Mr. Totsky, with hair discreetly dyed and a fresh set of teeth from Paris, surrounded by admirers as always. Come on, Prince. Quietly. <laughs> Now, let us surprise him. Believe me, gentlemen, I speak as an homme du monde, a man of the world. Subtlety, subtlety above all else, a certain delicacy. They are butterflies, easily crushed, charming, effervescent creatures, requiring, the best of them, a certain hothouse luxury to uh, encourage that special bloom of beauty. <laughs> To keep butterflies, Prince, it is necessary to have a large bottle of chloroform and a nice, sharp pin to pierce them with. Then, once they are dead, by all means put them in a glass case for other men to admire. Mr Totsky, Prince Mishkin, will you shake his hand, Prince? Oh, no. He has a flabby handshake. I'm afraid I didn't catch your name, my dear sir. Oh, I am Prince Leo Nikolaevich Mishkin. Ah, the mysterious Swiss gentleman. Yes, I have heard of you. I I'm Russian, not Swiss. Uh, but you were in Switzerland, uh, no? I was abroad there for reasons of ill health and returned here to my native land only today. He knows exactly who you are. It's just one of his affectations. Uh, I heard you were something of an invalid. No, don't worry, I won't have a fit. I haven't had a fit in a good two years. A fit? I'm an epileptic. How remarkable. Yeah, it's better than having false teeth. <laughs> Prince, as you know, Mr. Totsky and General Yapanchin, um, come over here, General, are both extremely anxious for me to get married. 
freeing Mr. Totsky here to make a mutually beneficial matrimonial connection. Connexion matrimonial with one of the general's daughters. That is the plan. And all I have to do is agree to it. Well, Prince, what shall I do? I will do whatever you say. You're asking me... I'm asking you if I should marry Mr. Ivolgin. Ganya. This is not a matter... Yes you... or no? No. No, you should not. <laughs> An announcement. Ganya Ivolgin, I have to tell you, on the Prince's recommendation, I've decided not to marry you. I will never marry you. Let that be the end of the matter once and for all. Nastasia Filipovna. Are you going to say something, Ganya? First, let me thank you, Nastasia Filipovna, for the extraordinary delicacy you have shown towards me in giving me your answer here before all these people. I am even more grateful to the prince who has done me the honour of involving himself so thoroughly in my private affairs. From this day forward, I will lead a new life. General... Take back your pearls and give them to your wife. Oh. Mr. Totsky, oh. I announce to you and to the whole world that I am my own mistress. Oh, my. I'm 25 years old and in the teeth of you all, especially in your teeth, Mr. Totsky, I declare myself to be an independent woman. Oh, yes, here it comes, the finishing touch. It's him. Ooh. Ragozhin. He's a madman. He thinks if he offers her enough money, she will go with him. He promised her he would get a hundred thousand rubles by tonight. Perhaps he has it and has come to claim her. Come in, come in! Madam and assembled personages, I am proud to announce that my good friend here, Mr. Parfion Ragoshin, pursuant to his word given to this delectable lady this afternoon, <laughs> has visited every moneylender in the city and has raised on proof of his imminent inheritance the staggering sum of 100,000 rubles in cash. Here it is. He has come to claim his reward. <laughs> Don't be shy, Mr. Rogorjian. Don't be shy. Nothing is embarrassing about money. Show it to us. I will keep all my promises to you, Nastasia. Wrapped up in newspaper. What a nice touch. Nastasia, you must not allow yourself to be maddened. You must not. I beg you. You beg me to what? To refuse his money? Why? There is more nobility in being Rogozhin's slut than in being Ganya's wife. Oh, thank you again. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> she knows what my love is worth. I've brought the proof of it. I'm not a learned man. I'm not an educated man. If I had been, I might have wooed her in other words. Why are you looking so mournful, Prince? Why shouldn't I become Rogozhin's slut? Answer me. Answer me. What decent man in all the world would marry me now? The Prince would, if he's your idea of a decent man. Would you? Would you marry me? Yes. You would marry Ragorjin slut. I wish you wouldn't use that word. You are mine. My heart, my love, my slut. You are not Ragorjin slut. You have been misused, terribly misused. You have suffered unspeakably and you are in torment. I see that. I see how much you disgust yourself and blame yourself, but I tell you, you are pure. No, you are innocent. You have committed no crime. And you have been reading too many novels. No, I will go with Ragorjin. It is my duty to go with him. My queen, I will give you gold to eat. Your duty? How is it your duty to throw yourself away like this? No, I, I, don't, I do not mean to insult you, Mr. Ragoshin. I know, I know, but be careful. I'm not always answerable for my temper. Indeed he isn't. Shut up! Oh, this is a madhouse! You should marry some milk and water maiden, Prince. One of this good general's lovely daughters. That's the kind of woman you need. Miss Aglaya, let me recommend her. I will thank you, sir, if you wish to stay in my employ, not to mention the names of my daughters in this kind of company. Oh, bravo, general. Not this kind of company. Oh, I, I meant, I, I meant, madam... Uh, I think the oh. prince is going to cry. Don't cry. None of this is your responsibility. Let me tell you something. I dreamt of you long ago when I was young. My benefactor here, Mr. Topsky, used to visit me in the country retreat he'd prepared for me. He would stay a month, two months, to dishonour, insult, excite and deprave me to his heart's content. But all the while, 
I dreamt there would be someone in the world who would come to me one day and say, none of this matters. I love you, and I will cherish you all my life. I will say those words. I will say those words and mean them. None of this matters. I will marry you and I will cherish you all my life. Trust me. We can't change the past. God does not allow it. I've had enough of this pantomime. I'm leaving this instant. How much money exactly did Totsky and the General offer you to marry me, Ganya? Where is the 100,000 rubles? Give it to me, Rogozhin. Here it is, my angel. Is it mine now? I can do whatever I want with it. Yes. Kiss me. <sighs> I want to give it to Ganya. I will give all of it to him. What? Yes, you can have it. You can have it all, but first, an experiment to see which demon dominates your soul. Vanity or greed. Here is the 100,000 rubles, a fortune. I will throw it into the fireplace. And you, dear Ganya, must put your hand into the flames and pull it out. And once you have done that, the money is yours. She is reckless and magnificent. Stop. N Nastasia, you are better than this. One, Please. two, three. There! Oh. One hundred thousand rubles, Ganya. If anyone but Ganya stretches his hand to the money, I'll brain him, and that includes you, Prince. For God's sake, grab it, man, grab it. Oh, the lovely money. You conceited fool. Go on, I'll make you take it. Don't do it, me. Let them think you're a fool, a greedy fool. Let them laugh at you. What does it matter? Uh, are you all right, Ganya? Oh, I need air. He is turning away. He is actually turning his back on the money and walking out of the room. Well... There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. His vanity is greater than his grief. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. oh, he's fainted. Now that is funny. Someone pull the damn money out of the fire and tuck it into his pocket. He can have it. He has earned it. I'm off. I'm leaving with my handsome, ugly, generous devil. Are you ready, Ragozhin? Come. Where are you going, Rip? I'm... Prince! Wait! Wait! Oh, what shall I do now? Come home with me. That's what you should do. Collier, what are you doing here? Have you been waiting all this while, you poor boy? You must be frozen. No, I'm not. I'm a Petersburg boy, and it would take more than a bit of wind and snow to make me shiver. I have to follow her. Why? Catch your breath. She decided against marrying Ganya, then? That's off? Yes. Oh, that's a relief, I suppose. Your brother is ill. He fainted. Nastasia was cruel to him, so cruel. You must go up and find him. Take him home. He will be very angry. He will abuse you. But you must be patient with him. I beg you to be patient. Don't go after her, Prince. No, I must. Oh, I wonder sometimes if all adults are idiots, or is it just the ones that I know? You will grow up to be a good man. Well, more fool me. Why must you involve yourself in all of this? If you see someone rushing headlong over a precipice, what do you do? Do you stand and watch? You don't leap after them, that's for I sure. I want to help her. She is like a bright star falling into ruin. Oh, poetry. But also, Collier, the life of an invalid. I have been an invalid almost all my life. It is sometimes like being a member of a different species. I don't know the most plain and obvious things. People laugh at me. Sometimes they feel kindly towards me, and I'm grateful, but... we well, supposing a man like me, an odd creature like me, dreamt that perhaps his life, too, could have meaning. You want to help her to make yourself feel useful? Yes. <laughs> yes. I think it is partly that. And also because I find it unbearable. Human suffering. I used to sit and dream in the long evenings of all that I might do in the world. Very heroical dreams. Of course, now that I'm here, I feel uncertain and bewildered. 
Nevertheless, I will do what I can. Kolya? Yes? Will you go and find your brother and take him home? Because you asked me to, I will. Thank you. Take care, Prince. That's it. Last one leaving tonight. Won't be another Moscow train till morning. You'd best go home. You look done in. Thank you. You are sure? Helped her aboard myself. Not a face you'd be likely to forget. Nor his. Sorry. Wake up, damn you. Hmm? What? What is this place? You're in your hmm? room, in our apartment. Huh? You're a lodger here, remember? You've fallen asleep on the bed with your clothes on. I do that sometimes when I'm drunk. Are you drunk? No. We're more alike than you think. Did you see the way I fainted tonight? Like one of your fits, wasn't it? No, not really. Ganya, I'm asleep. Not before you answer my questions. Did you find her? No. But you know where she's gone. Moscow. I've been walking around for hours trying to think what I should do. I'm sure of one thing. I'm not asking you for advice. You needn't hope that. Here. Take it. If you can't see it, you can smell it. Burnt newspaper. It's the bundle of money she left me. I want you to take it to her. I want you to hand it to her with these words. Madam, I have been sent by Mr. Evrogin. There's no point in giving me a message. I won't remember it. Just give it to her, then, without a word. And make sure that Rogozin sees you do it. Will you do that? I'll give her the money. Are you really going after her? Yes. Prince... I must I'm... sleep. I must get into the bed. Oh, you really are all in, aren't you? Steady on. Sit on the bed. Get, get undressed from there. Would you like me to wait with you until you're asleep? No. I meant that kindly. Though I myself hate people sitting me asleep. Thank you, Ganya. Good night. Might I have some coffee? Where are your sisters? <sighs> I will not have lax manners in this house. People must learn that there is order in the world. Alexandra is in bed with a severe cold, as you do know. Do not presume to tell me what I do and don't know. And Adelaida is at this very moment... Do you take no interest in the fate of your daughter, sir? <sighs> he thinks he can give me a pearl necklace and I will forgive him. For what reason do I require forgiveness? Coffee, please. For introducing that imposter into my house. I have already had the honour to inform you that Ganya Evolgin has been dismissed from his post in my household. Oh, poor Ganya. Why do you say that? Because someone should feel sorry for him and no one does. Uh. I was not talking of him. I was talking of that pauper you pushed into my drawing room. The one uh. who claimed to be my long-lost cousin. A well-known trick. My dear, there can be no doubt that the prince is your cousin. You say that, of course, to provoke me. My dear, there and is no... And to wound oh. me. Would a cousin of mine run off in pursuit of some trollop all the way to Moscow? Not a word or a sign from him for weeks. Aglaya, Aglaya, will you leave the room, please? Oh. Do you think that everyone doesn't know? <sighs> all our daughters knew that you intended one of them to marry this Mr Totsky. This Nastasia woman was his mistress. And now the prince has run harem scarum halfway round the world in pursuit of her. Pour your father no. some coffee. Oh, yes, mother. Why has he gone after her? Why? Don't you care that this scandal reflects so badly on our family? We may have to leave the country. Oh, that, my dear, will not be necessary. Any connection between Totsky and one of the girls is now clearly impossible. And for myself, I am barely civil to the man. He is being dropped by everyone. As for the prince, I will say this. I believe his motives are noble. 
Mm. He views Nastasia Filipovna as, in some way, a victim. He fancies himself her, her saviour. She will destroy him. She will destroy him for the pleasure of it. Can't uh, you help him, Father? I am trying to help him in a practical way. I won't have any more to do with Miss Nastasia. That matter he must manage for himself, no. But I have been in contact with his lawyers. They had no idea he was back in the country. Well, 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 the good news is there is an unclaimed inheritance owing to him. Oh. Yes, and far from being a poor man, he is now quite comfortably off. That's some good news, isn't it? Will he come back to Petersburg, do you think, Father? Perhaps, but my last report suggests that he has still not found either Nastasia or Rogozhin. Until then, our knight errant will no doubt feel duty-bound to stay there, in Moscow. Oh, come in, Miss Lebedev. Come in and, and sit down. What lovely manners you have. And what a lovely jacket. Does that colour suit you, do you think? I heard you had come into a little money. Now, look at me. Don't be shy, look at me. What do you see? That you have been beaten. You have a black eye. He thrashed me. Me thrashed by him. Ragoshin. Of course, Ragoshin. Do you think I would allow any other man to mark my face with his fists? I'm sorry that you've been hurt. I think it would be good for you to separate yourself from him. But at the moment, I'm concerned to hear news of Nastasia. I've been trying for weeks to find her. Do you think I have come here to betray my friend simply because he has beaten me up? I did not ask you to betray your friend. All I wish to know is the whereabouts of Nastasia Filipovna. You accuse me of being like Judas. I accuse you of nothing. But if I am he, does that make Ragushin a kind of Christ? What do you think, Prince? I think this is not a fit subject for jests. Why do you want to find her? Do you know where she is? Now, please, help me if you can. I'll tell you this for nothing. She doesn't love him, but that doesn't stop her. There have been disgraceful scenes, nights of such sin, orgies of vice. What can a man like you offer her after that? A respectable marriage? I don't wish to discuss that with you. Well, he has offered to do the same. Marry her. I told him he was a fool. And then out flew his fists. Yes. Ah, she was getting fed up with him anyway. So I helped the lady make her escape. Hired the carriage with my own money. Took her to stay at my sister-in-law's in the country. She has taken to reading the apocalypse. Uh, Nastasia, not my sister-in-law. Not, I venture to suggest, a good sign. What do you think, Prince? I will go there immediately. Uh, but not before you give me some money, eh? A reward for information received. Yeah. How much do you want? Want everything. Need 125 roubles. I say that to impress you with how exact I am. You count out the money while I write down the address. Don't look at me so, Prince. I am impervious. Some day you will say something or look something that will make me ashamed of myself. But today is not that day. Nastasia? It is Prince Mishkin here. May I come in? I had almost forgotten you. Yes, come in. Well, I'm very pleased to have found you. Would you like to kiss me? I would like to talk with you. I can do other things than kiss, you know. Are you tongue-tied, Prince? I brought you something from Ganya Volgin. The money. The money you put into his pocket that dreadful night. Ganya? I'd almost forgotten him as well. I'll put it here on this little table. Will we sit down, Nastasia, and be comfortable? You can sit down. I'm looking out of the window. What can you see? Come and look. It's Ragozhin. I thought perhaps I might be free, free of you all. But what would I do if I was not trapped and harried on all sides? I am not a hunter, Nastasia. I am your friend. <laughs> you know I would never harm you. I would never hurt you. 
I've come here to help you find peace. If he sets foot in the garden, I will do something. Throw myself out of the window. Cut my veins open like a Roman. Do you want to wave to him? He's very jealous of you. Would you have married me? I would have married you, and I still will. If you would do me that honour... Is it because you love me? Yes. I love you. Is it because you pity me? Who could not pity you? Nastasia, listen. I've come into a little money, enough to take you abroad for a while so that you can rest and get strong. You're not well, Nastasia. That is the difference between us. You would marry me out of pity while I would marry him out of sheer spite. Out of malice. To destroy him. To destroy yourself. That is a matter of course. Oh, get out of this room, Prince. I feel a great rage coming on me. A great resentment. I know very well how to torment you. You think you're above all this filthy passion, don't you? Come here. You're right. I will go for now. I will leave you time to think, but I am your friend, Nastasia. <laughs> Always. No matter what happens. No matter what happens! Oh, there's a real incentive to excel myself. <laughs> Get out! Are you the best that God can send to save me? Let's walk. You followed me here. Did Lebedev tell you he had given me this address? How are you? You've not been taking care of yourself, my friend. We'll walk back to the station together. Arm in arm, if you like. I should warn you, though, you have every reason to be afraid of me. Don't let the fact that I like you deceive you. Don't let the fact that I have tears in my eyes just looking at your kind face deceive you. We, we will do as you say. We will walk. I, I, I will tell my driver to follow behind us. You have a carriage now, Prince. Lebedev told me you'd come into money. That's good. That's excellent. You needn't blush. No, the driver is only hired for the afternoon. But you are right, I am a little ashamed to have money. May I ask you something? You can ask me anything. You are a man of feeling. Don't you pity her? Will you see how she suffers? Let me rescue her from you. Isn't that what you wish in your heart? I want so much to believe that. Let's walk. And I will think how to answer you. Do you wish sometimes that we could be like those children playing innocently in that garden? Playing innocently? That's what you think because you don't remember. Children are savages. We are saints in comparison. You must have been bullied when you were a child. Oh, yes. Unmercifully? Unmercifully. <laughs> <laughs> I would have protected you. Listen, Prince. I don't know what world you're fitted for, but it's not this one. You don't love like a human being. I know you pity her, but I don't. What I feel for her is not pity. Any moment of tenderness I've ever felt for her was just a sign of my exhaustion. She exhausts me, and I will have her, at whatever cost to me, or to her, or to you. I look at her. I hear the sound her dress makes as she moves. I hoard every word she said to me like a miser. The abuse, the taunts, the incitements. When she is asleep, I stare at her until my eyes burn. Calm yourself, my dear friend. Never! Do you know, once she tried to stab me... You must give her up. I don't say this from any selfish motive. You are bad for each other. Now listen to me, Parthian. I have no desire in the world to pain you. But you can see how ill she is. She is a broken thing that needs rest and time and peace. You really don't understand. Yes, she is pale and ill. She can be anything and I wouldn't care. She's beautiful. So what? What does anything matter? Why did she try to stab you? We argued. I'm a jealous man and she talks to people just to see the sweat start on my forehead. Oh. 
You look like you're going to cry. Cheer up. I don't want you to be sad. Tell me this. Do you wear a cross, Prince? Yes. So do I. One that my mother blessed. Take off your cross and I will take off mine. And we will swap them. That is the good old Russian custom, isn't it? Then we will be as brothers. We shall be as brothers. There's the station. Leave your driver with me. I'll pay him. You get the train to Moscow. It'll be much quicker. I, I, I would rather go back in my carriage. The train is better. Why do you look so angry? What do you want me to confess? That I'm scared that unless I see you board the train, I won't believe you've actually gone. That I'm scared you'll sneak back to her and whisper more of your poisonous little pieties. Whisper them so well she'll go with you. Do you think I'm ashamed to tell you that I don't trust you? Well, I'm afraid to take the train. That is the truth. Afraid? What can someone like you be afraid of? When I came up to Moscow from Petersburg, I had this thought, this idea that someone was watching me. Someone with dark eyes was staring at me from the corner of the carriage. It made me feel ill. I knew it was all my imagination, nevertheless, even thinking of it makes me very fearful. I'm a weak man. I know how much thoughts can prey upon the mind. They, they, they prey upon mine. Thoughts... Are you ill? I don't understand what you're saying. Perhaps it's true that I cannot help you or her, but I must try, mustn't I? Mustn't I? You're always giving advice. It's time you heard some. Get back to Petersburg. Get yourself some other thing to do than bother us. Prince, all this will prove the ruin of you. I will get the driver to take you the last few hundred yards to the station. You will get on the train and go home. Agreed? Agreed. Your arm, Parthian. Driver! Is he drunk? No, I, I'm not drunk. Ill? You ill, sir? I must get to Petersburg. Uh, this is Moscow, sir, not Petersburg. I Moscow train Petersburg. station. You're in Moscow train station in the ticket office. Get to Petersburg. What are we to do? He wants to go to Petersburg. This man's a friend of mine. A friend of yours? He's my friend, I tell you. I was with him only an hour ago. Prince, it's me. Prince? This gentleman is under our protection. I'm telling you now, you're not getting your hands on this poor gentleman, nor on his wallet neither. Another time I'll make you swallow those words and your teeth with them. As it is, get me two tickets to Petersburg, first class, and here is 50 rubles for your trouble. Thank God you were there. Yes. Sometimes even a devil does a good deed by accident. I followed you. I was there because I didn't trust you. I was checking up on you. And we won't talk of that. We won't talk of anything. Rest. I'd been standing at the ticket office a good while. I'd been standing thinking I must buy a ticket, but it was all so complicated. I thought I must reach into my pocket for the money. I must use my hand to reach into my pocket. I looked at my hand, I looked at it, and the word hand came to me. I knew it was my hand. I knew what hands were for. Shall I fetch and a blanket? There must be blankets on this train. It, it seemed strange to think that by an effort of will I could move this object, this hand, but that I could not move, say, the handle of the door by an effort of will. One thing was animate, one thing was not. Are you, are you li li listening? One thing was animate. Can I feel your forehead? Yes, but you must be careful how you touch me. I am explosive. I could fly apart and the least provocation. I will be good. You're a good boy. Uh, it isn't a fever. I feel so lost. And you wonder sometimes if this world is real. No. All our perceptions are like the flimsiest piece of paper. And through that paper one can see something. One can see something moving the shadow of something and your whole being is suffused with red. It will break through. This monstrous something, it will break through. And what will survive after its terrible manifestation will not be you. Are you going to have a fit? Is that it? And then, just at that moment of greatest fear, clarity comes. Total, as though one had lived all one's life 
at half power in eclipse to find suddenly that all the veils are lifted, all the doubt is gone, and there, at the heart of everything, this light that is not like light. It is not like light. No, it's, it's not. God. Keep talking, Prince. Look at me. Look at me! No. No! Boy? I have no money. Leave me be. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. My name is Ragozhin. You've heard of me? You've heard of me. And you're Ganya's little brother, aren't you? I am, in fact, three inches taller than he is. And this is the Yapanchin house. What were you doing at the Yapanchin's house? What were you doing there? You can't bully me. You think not. Well, I'm glad I found you. I was going to call on them, but I'm not really the kind of man who can call on decent, respectable people, am I? You have news of the Prince? Well, for that, I forgive you everything. Tell me how he is. Is he going to come back and stay in our house? He's back in Petersburg. I brought him back. I don't know what to say to you. What I should tell you, you being only a boy. I know all about Nastasia Filipovna. I know you're another one of her admirers. You, Ganya, the prince. Quite a triumvirate. Be very careful of how you speak of her to me. Where is the prince? You haven't harmed him, have you? He has been ill these last two days. I have made arrangements for him. He's being looked after. I came here. I was going to tell them what happened, but I think the prince may not want people to know he has had a fit. Not his society friends. Now that I've run into you, you can make that decision. Or Ganya can. You're a smart boy, worming your way in with the people who threw your brother out of his job. It's not like that. I'm not going to explain to you. The Yepanchins are nice people, the mother especially. But what would someone like you know about that? Nothing. I will take you to see the prince. Come. I'm not going anywhere with you. You can tell me where he is and I'll make my own way there. This is not where I expected to find you. Well, he's actually been very kind. Lebedev? Hmm. Ragozhin must be paying him a fortune. Oh, I don't like to think of you being here. What do they feed you on, for instance? Oh, a lot of nice soup and bread. Now, don't worry about me. T tell me about yourself. You look a bit... Well, older, I suppose. Oh, I'll give you my news. Varia, once Ganya's wedding to that woman was off. Speak gently of Nastasia for my sake, if not for pity's sake. I said nothing about her. But what a man thinks is his own business. And God's. I'm an atheist. <laughs> to continue, Varia, once all that was out of the way, got herself married. That is good news. Married to the first fool who asked her. A money lender, if you like. And how is Ganya? Ganya is out of work. General Yapanchin was very angry with him for not marrying Nastasia Filipovna, so he lost his job. Did you give her back Ganya's money, the money she tormented with him in the night of the party? I gave her back the money. I thought well of him for doing that, throwing it back in her face. Mind you, he curses himself for having done it now. <laughs> oh, I am sick of people. What is wrong, Kolya? My father was in the debtor's prison, if you must know. He signed a positive blizzard of IOUs, and then they all came looking for their money. What could we do but ask Varya's husband for help? He was not pleased to be asked for money, not at all. He made us wait and wait. Important to teach the drunken wretch a lesson. Oh, Those were his exact words. Your poor father. I didn't desert him while he was inside. You needn't think that. No, of course I don't think that. They got quite friendly with me in there. Used to let me sleep over as long as I brought my own blanket. But he is out now? He's out. If there are any difficulties in the future, come to me. Anyway, that's all my news. What have you been doing with yourself, aside from chasing after her and making yourself ill? Nothing. I've done nothing, except, as you said, I have made myself ill. Is there nothing I can do for you, Collier? You could do me a favour. A serious one. Yeah. You could try and talk a little sense into my father. You could keep a bit of an eye on him, when you're better yourself. I have an idea. 
This is a large house. I will ask Lebedev to take your father in for a week or two. We will convalesce together. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It will be such a weight off my mind. The fact is, I haven't been to school in weeks, and my exams this summer are rather important. What's it like having a fit? Like fainting? No. Sorry. I could bear the fits. I could bear with them. It's just that I'm afraid that one day I will not get back into my body. Not properly. It's like having a great fire in one's mind, or in one's brain, rather. I'm afraid that one day there will be such a conflagration that I will be swept away. I will be burned down to nothing. I will be left just sitting in the ashes. An idiot, without reprieve and without hope. That is my fear. That won't happen. What you need is a bit of sense, and if you haven't got much, you should listen to those that have. Me, for instance. Oh. A thousand apologies. Distinguished guests come to ask after your worship's health. We are trying oh. to have a private conversation. Look at him. And we were told he was on his deathbed. Sorry to disappoint you. Miss Aglaya, this is particularly kind of you. Oh, not at all. Is he married? Is he married to that woman? No. Is he quite sane? Uh -oh. Mother. My dear friends, the sight of your kind faces is enough to restore me to complete health. Come into my arms! Oh. Come into my arms, Prince. Oh, oh. What a restoration! Who in the world is this? My father. Here is the boy I dandled in my arms. Is he indisposed? Uh, Sir, is mm. this any condition in which to visit an invalid? Madam. You should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, Come, sir. What you need to do is to lie down. Do. What would your poor wife say if she could see you in this state? I, I will be back in a moment, uh, Prince. Kolya, yeah, Kolya, could you take his other arm? Kolya. You'd better go and help her, Kolya. Well, I hardly had a chance to talk to you before all these people no, arrived. We will talk later. Oh, all right. Oh. I, I don't know what to say to you. You always have such an earnest look and... Today you look sad as well. I'm sure to say something frivolous. It would be nice if you did. Tell me how your sisters are. Um, Alexandra has formed an attachment, to use that stupid phrase, with a young man called Radomsky, which is a relief to my mother with three great-grown girls in the house. Of course, it's all we are good for, to be married off. Oh, and the best of it all, of course, is that he is rich. Well, it's not a crime to be rich. Yes, it is. At least I would have supposed you would think so. I've hardly asked how you are. Poor Collier asked me that before, and I'm afraid I gave him a very gloomy answer. I'm always a little dejected after a fit. Perhaps you should not have gone to Moscow. Have you ever felt that if you spoke to someone directly from your heart that they must understand you? I spoke to them both, but what did it achieve? I may well have made matters worse... Perhaps I should go back to Switzerland. I have a friend there who runs a little village school in the mountains. He might find a little work for me. You mustn't leave us. We are your family. I'm full of weakness and self-pity. How long do you intend to stay in this place with these people? Lebedev is not a bad man. He's not a good man, either. He likes to make mischief, primarily because he likes to see what will happen. He thinks of himself as stirring a stick in an ant's nest. I've spoken to him about that. Each one of us is a person, unique and precious. Though I know that is a cliché. I'm glad it is one. Some things need to be repeated again and again in order for us to first hear, and then perhaps to believe them. <laughs> You're smiling at me. I think of you as a quiet kind of man, and yet every time I see you, you begin on one of these long speeches about life and people and so on. I like it. It's because my spirits are lifting, thanks to you. Prince, come quickly, now! What's happened? 
See, you have another visitor. Prince, what a popular chap you are. Aglaya, go and sit inside. No. Do you know who it is? I do. Lady Edith, did you ask her here? <laughs> Dear Lady Descend, here are a host of old and new acquaintances. Good afternoon. Nastasia Filipovna, allow me to introduce... Uh, Mrs. <coughs> no, I won't get out, Lady Edith. I'm quite comfortable as I am. You need a haircut, Prince. Mrs. Yapanchin, we've never been introduced. Nevertheless, may I take the liberty of speaking to you? Oh. I am Nastasia Filipovna. Of course, you must have heard of me. Really, Prince? Excellent. Well, I have heard that your daughter, your daughter Alexandra, hopes to marry a Mr. Radomsky. Oh. Is that correct? I know he gives the appearance of being a rich man, but he is, in fact, horribly in debt. Oh. As a favour, I could ask Rogozhin to buy up his IOUs, if you like. Would you like me to do that? I'm afraid I don't understand a word you're saying. I also speak French and German, if that would be a help. <laughs> <laughs> you're back in Petersburg? Yes. Where are you living? With Rogozhin. Yes. So I would advise against you making a social call. I heard you were ill. I came to see you, but you have so many friends. Darling people, I'm very, very busy at the moment. I can't stay, but thank you for your warm welcome. Oh, I will leave it to another occasion to express my full thanks to you all. Especially you, Lebedev. Driver! This is the final straw. You brought Nastasia here, didn't you, Lebedev? Mm. You were hoping for a scene. <laughs> it's not a good idea for you to get suspicious. That's how a lot of the real loonies start. Afraid to eat their soup for fear of poison. Oh, brace up, Prince. Just a little harmless fun. And never mind, Miss Aglaya. You needn't worry about the Prince here. He's free of Nastasia now. She's made her choice, so you are free to make your move. I'd get going, though, miss, if you want my advice. He's a bit more elusive than he should be, the prince. How dare you talk to me like that? I am a man of courage. Prince, will you say nothing? <laughs> I will say something. We are leaving immediately, immediately. We came here in a spirit of compassion and have been grossly abused. Aglaya? I am happy to leave. In fact, if you do not call for the carriage immediately, Mother, I will simply start to walk back to Petersburg. No, no, M Mrs. Japanchin, please don't leave like this. Look, I, I am sincerely sorry. Did you have to stand there to... with your mouth open I like did... a total ninny? Are you so moonstruck no, I, I'm, by her? I'm very sorry. I see I... now. It is more than pity you feel for her. Do you deny it? No, no, don't deny it. I came here to see you. I defended you to everyone. Now... Now, if I were a man, I think I would hit you. Please get out of our way, if you please. You are very quiet, Prince. Have a cigarette. It will clear your head. You feeling ill again? No. After the fit, for some time, you feel at peace. Not perhaps in a nice way. But as though one's soul and one's body was muffled. I was in a little cocoon until yesterday. Having all those visitors woke me up. I'm halfway back to the world now. So you emerge like a butterfly, or maybe a homely moth. Well, Prince, let me warn you to beware of bright lights. They will dazzle, and then they will burn you. I'm not a butterfly. I'm nothing new. I'm the same man I was before. Sometimes I long to be transformed. Have a cigarette. I'm not, Collier. All this philosophical stuff is wasted on me. What a good boy he is. He's young, that's all. You mistake ignorance for innocence. Now you are being philosophical. For me to be straightforward is very hard. I have the soul of a corkscrew. Though I do not drink like my poor old father. Let me be straightforward. And you, Prince, you are to answer honestly. Will you? Of course I will. Of course you will. What a thing to say. But you can say it, can't you? What is it you wish to know? Simply this. 
Nastasia Filipovna has made it clear that she will not marry you. Is that the case? At the moment, yes, that is the case. She's a very proud woman. All those who have been crushed and rise up can outdo Satan in their pride. She's living openly in his house. You should be more careful, Prince. Kolya tells me that you have exchanged crosses with that animal. Do you seriously think that will protect you from his jealousy? What do you want to speak to me about? I have abandoned all hopes of Nastasia. I am thinking of another woman. Can you guess whom? Miss Aglaya. What did you say? Speak out. Miss Aglaya. Indeed. So, very simply put, are you in love with her? I regard myself as her friend and brother. Hmm. She was very angry after the visit yesterday. Lebedev told me what she said to you before she left. She was angry. Did you write to her to explain, to apologize? I thought of it, but no, I did not write to her. It is ridiculous that such a man as you is my rival at every hand's turn. I do not consider us to be rivals, Ganya. The instant I heard what happened, I wrote to her. It seemed an excellent opportunity to ingratiate myself with her. Perhaps it was a little contemptible to write about you in the way I did. I put the worst gloss on your behaviour I could, especially with regard to Nastasia, and all the while posing as your dear, concerned friend. Her reply was very interesting. You were surprised that she replied to me, and so quickly? You were thinking of the last letter I wrote to her before all this, the one you read aloud to her, the one you both laughed over. Nobody laughed, Ganya, you know this. I had thought we were friends now. Would you like to read her letter to me? No. No, it wasn't all bad. She said that probably you couldn't help yourself. That you were trying to act the part of the holy fool when anyone could see that really you were just an idiot, a freak of nature, beneath contempt but not entirely beyond pity. She wrote that? About me? Does it hurt you? The words are very wounding. Oh, well, she is just a foolish, self-indulgent, vain little girl with her nose out of joint because of Nastasia Filipovna. Miss Aglaya is a very pretty thing, but in comparison with Nastasia's beauty. The women take those things so much to heart. She is jealous. Now is the ideal time for me to make my move. I don't think you will ever have much success with Aglaya, Ganya. That, that is my honest opinion. She is attracted to me. I know that. Perhaps that is true. <sighs> Look, all I'm asking for is a clear field with this one, eh, Prince? I'm not saying my motives in writing to her were very kind. In fact, they were mean. They were very mean. I'm sorry, Prince. I seem to spend most of our conversations apologising to you. Why is that? I've told you already that we are not rivals. I know what you think. You think she is interested in you, and all these disdainful words are only a smokescreen. But it's just pity she feels for you. Pity for a broken-down wreck of a man that no woman could love. Really love. She's not exactly sure what she feels about me at the moment. Is that the truth? I would not like you to be hurt, to be disappointed. You do not have the temperament to deal well with disappointment. Which is a pity, as I have so much to contend with. You are not being honest with me. I have told you everything. But you are hiding something, aren't you? I know that Aglaya, Miss Aglaya, has written to you. She has, hasn't she? She did write to me. Is that why you came to see me? To find out what was in her letter? I have no right to ask you what was in it. No right, and yet I demand that you tell me. Or I beg you. Whichever works. It was very short. Just a note, really asking me to meet her on the green bench in front of the bandstand at the Pavlov's Gardens. Eight o'clock 
in the morning on Friday. She asked you for an assignation? An assignation? No. I am her friend. Nothing more. Oh, don't be a simpleton. And don't expect me to be a simpleton. So will you go? Will you go, clutching a fistful of flowers and a tear-stained poem? I will go. Tell me if you love her, Prince. Tell me. I am a sick man, a broken-down wreck. Answer me. It is hard to answer. I find it hard to believe. I didn't know until yesterday. She was talking to me, and I felt suddenly this hope, this elation. It was a shock. Yes. I love her. I do believe I really love her. Damnation! That was episode two of The Idiot by Dostoevsky. Dramatized for radio by Melissa Murray. Prince Mishkin was played by Paul Rees. Rogozhin by Roger Allam. Ganya by Alex Jennings. Nastasia by Leah Williams. General Yapanchin by David Swift. And General Evolgin by Stephen Moore. Lebedev was played by Gerald McDermott. Mrs. Yapanchin by Paula Jacobs. Aglaya by Tracy Ann Oberman, Collier by Carl Prekop, Alexandra by Gemma Churchill, and Totsky by Martin Heider. The Idiot was directed by Cherry Cookson. <laughs>